Thank you, Barbara. Um, so as a high school student, I never thought I would ever end up standing in front of an audience full of teachers. <laughs> Truly game changing for me. <laughs> Anyways, so I grew up with my first computer when I was five years old. It was an Intel Pentium 4 CPU by Sony. Definitely one of the slowest computers I've ever owned. <laughs> Since then, we've come a long way. But yes, as they say, I've grown up as a technology fanboy. Big passion for technology. I've always been the one that helped my family with any technological issues they would have. So ever since I came to Charter in sixth grade, I've always been fascinated by how wonderful we've used technology throughout the years. Whether it be using technology to stream our commencement ceremony for alumni to watch, no matter where they are in the world, or interdisciplinary uses with art classes. Last year, when I went to China for a school exchange trip, I 3D scanned Chinese national monuments, and I brought the scans back to Penn Charter and printed the 3D models and shared the monuments with the entire school. But with all these amazing applications of technology, many, including myself, wondered, why are all these technologies limited to our 44-acre campus in East Falls, Philadelphia? There's a famous quote, do good with what thou hast. Going to a Quaker school, and especially one founded by William Penn himself, I often see or hear this quote in my day-to-day -day life. We were truly doing good on our campus, but we could do more. And so this is where my story begins. A few years ago, Penn Charter started a new initiative called the Center for Public Purpose. It was designed to expand community service and service learning throughout the school. The Center for Public Purpose focused on issues that face the immediate neighborhoods surrounding Penn Charter the most, education, food insecurity, and poverty. Today, I would like to share with you three examples of how the Center for Public Purpose has begun to tackle the education issue in the city of Philadelphia. The first example is this armrest brace. Every sophomore at Penn Charter is required to take a Quakerism class, which incorporates service learning and Quaker principles. On their weekly trip to the Wider Memorial School, a Philadelphia public school that exclusively serves children with physical and mental challenges, they know that these students had trouble maneuvering their walkers. And this was because of a lack of an armrest brace. So the Penn Charter students and the Widener students teamed up and 3D modeled on Google SketchUp this armrest brace you see here. With this easily 3D printable armrest brace, they could attach it to the walker and remove the discomfort associated with operating the walker. The second example is our partnership with SparkMakers, a nonprofit organization that brings STEAM education to students in schools in high poverty areas. Uh, I'd like to show you a video of the SparkMakers partnership. we're doing here at St. James really came out of an effort with our Center for Public Purpose to go much deeper in education and poverty and other issues in the city. Part of our big thing is bringing more STEM, whereas people add arts in, like STEAM programming, into our schools and our neighborhoods. And we're working with a local nonprofit called Spark Makers to bring in hands on projects in the school. Uh, I've been doing this kind of activity for almost like more than 10 years. Uh, I have a background in art, culture, and technology. And I was invited by the program to develop a series of uh, activities. So they've been working with motion and sunlight and electricity. They're learning about circuits and how to make their own flashlights and how to put all that together. You feed the circuit and it'll light off. Part of the process for us is bringing our own Penn Charter students in to teach these courses. We are hoping, for instance, the St. James kids would get involved. We could train future interns from St. James. I use the battery, um, the rubber band, and wire, and a light bulb to create a flashlight. And the way to spread this program out throughout educational institutions in the city is to let students take the lead. 
we uh, we're teaching the kids about engineering to get them interested so they can maybe tell their friends about engineering and spread the word about all the stuff that we're doing. It's not adults bringing a program in and hoping it turns out all right. It's students teaching students and spreading those kind of peer relationships. Today we learned about simple machines and how to work them into a car. Today our challenge is to create a simple machine, okay? Well, what else does it have? The students yeah. learned a lot about wheel and axle and lever and how to incorporate well, those in their car. I'm looking forward to next week. And so, as you've just seen here with these two projects, just a few hours each week can truly make a difference in these students' lives, bringing them technology that they may otherwise not have the chance to access. The third project I would like to share with you today is a personal project of mine. When I was a sophomore, I was taking an advanced art course, and the chair of the visual arts and design department at Penn Charter, Sheila Ruin, approached me one day to ask if I would be interested in working on a video project for Wider Memorial. When I walked into the meeting, I had no idea what I was getting myself into, so I was very nervous. Later, I found out that the video project was a promotional project designed for outreach to prospective donors and potential families. This project would be an eight-minute documentary film showcasing a day in the life of Wider Memorial, and it would showcase perspectives from teachers, staff, administrators, and students. And so the project began. For three months, I traveled each week to Widener for hours at a time, gathering anecdotes, stories, experiences, and testimonials. When I returned to Penn Charter, I spent countless hours in the media lab chipping away piece by piece at the film. Miraculously, I finished the film by June of my sophomore year. And so I took the film to Widener Memorial and showed the film at an all-school assembly. As I sat in the auditorium, and the film played, I could hear smiles, I could hear occasional laughter and smiles fill the room. And that was when I realized that although it was originally an academic project for my advanced art course, it truly became a personal project. When I returned from my junior year in the fall, I continued to travel to Widener each week and gathered more footage. I created another edition of the film, which would end up being the final version. And then that spring, March of my junior year, I was invited to present to the School District of Philadelphia's School Reform Commission. The School Reform Commission is the governing body of the School District of Philadelphia. And so with my head of school, Dr. Daryl Ford, Wider Memorial's principal, Sharon Glodek, and many Penn Charter faculty members and supporters in attendance, I presented an abridged version of my film to the SRC. A project that has come from humble beginnings of an eight-minute film designed for just the use of outreach to donors and prospective families became a film that reached the entire city of Philadelphia. And before I wrap up, I would like to take a moment and dedicate my talk to Mr. Stephen O'Hara, who was the Title I coordinator and director of technology at Wider Memorial School. Sadly, Mr. O'Hara passed away in August. Well, his leadership, creativity, and innovation, the Widener Film Project would not have been possible. In the manner of friends, could we please take a moment of silence for Mr. O'Hara? Thank you. Technology has truly changed the game on our own campuses. It is our duty to bring the technology and its game-changing qualities out beyond the boundary and walls of our own classrooms and campus. And campus and use it to do good. Thank you.